Hey watch friends, today we're going to be taking a look at a new piece from Gravathon. This is their Argomatic. This will be coming to Kickstarter on January 25th of 2022. If you want to check that out, I will have a link to that in the video description. Additionally, in case you missed it, I did actually feature an unboxing of this version here. This is a prototype that was loaned to the, into the channel, so accordingly the packaging is subject to change. I believe they're going to do some updates. Additionally, it's going to come with a book that wasn't included with that, uh, and you'll have the option of the strap or bracelet, but we'll talk about that throughout the video. Getting into the specs, the case on this is 42 millimeters, and as you can see, this is a lugless design, so it's going to be somewhat reminiscent of like a lot of modern smartwatches with just an overall round shape. As a result, you do, of course don't have any lug to lug uh, measurements for that. It's going to be the straight 42 millimeters. For the lugs themselves, you can see this is kind of a hidden design here. So it's actually tucked in under the case. And this is going to be a strap change friendly standard 20 millimeters. And this, as you can see here, does have quick release spring bars. So be able to swap that out. As for the thickness, I mentioned in the, in the unboxing that I would get a measurement on this for myself to verify. It's only actually coming in at 10.8 millimeters, so right in line with what they said. That is including this case back, as well as the slight pop-up for that crystal uh, as well. So that's very, very svelte. And with the movement, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, it's not entirely surprising, but at the same time, that's still pretty impressive. As far as the crystal, this does have, as you can see, a beveled edge and this is a flat sapphire crystal, and it does have inner AR coating as well. I, me I neglected to mention there, I did actually, out of curiosity, take a measurement because of the way this case back is shaped. You can see how this kind of pops out on the bottom here. I actually measured without that, and that actually only comes in at 8.7 millimeters, so it's even slimmer there. And then, of course, with this wedge shape to that out here on the edges, it's even skinnier than that. So it's a really interesting design overall, and it's somewhat deceiving as far as what you would expect for thickness. As far as the movement, this comes with a Miyota 9015. If you're familiar with the channel, you've probably heard about this one a hundred times. It's a movement that I like a lot. Japanese movement, high beat, uh, has good power reserve, hacking, hand winding, date window at the six o'clock position. So pretty much all the bells and whistles that you could expect for, uh, for the price point. And speaking of price, I'll go ahead and get straight to that. On this one, it is going to be coming in at $270 starting price, which for a Miyota 9015 is really quite a good buy, but we'll talk about that more as we go through. As I mentioned, it's going to be available, and I believe the same price with either the strap or the bandolier bracelet. There's also going to be an option available with both of them that would be $290. So for only 20 bucks more, you can get both if you like those uh, as far as the different style options. As far as the water resistance, this does come with 50, uh, 50 meters or 5 atmospheres of water resistance. Regarding the weight, I don't have the bracelet to measure that one, but I did measure it on this factory strap. And this is only coming at 62.6 grams. I personally, as we'll see later in the video, was wearing this on a canvas uh, strap, a khaki canvas strap. And that was only coming in at 59.3 grams. So it shaved even a, few, a couple more grams uh, off there as well. So really, as you can tell, a featherweight watch uh, by, uh, by all means, even though this is a stainless steel case, it's really in the titanium lightness category. All right, so now that we have the basic specs out of the way, let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into the watch itself. First, for the colors. This is available with two different co dial colors. There's going to be a blue and a black. But specifically, though, there's variations thereof. The blue is going to be available with either a silver case that we're looking at today or a gold case as well, and both of those do have matching bandolier options. The black version is going to be available with a gunmetal case. So you have different configurations there depending on what dial you like as well as what case colorations. So you have nice options. As far as the dial itself, you can see that this is a sandwich construction overall, and it has a lot of sandwich cuts going onto this, more so than I've seen with most others. The dial finishing is going to be what I would describe as like a satin texture, and then uh, the uh, inlays, uh, as you would expect for most sandwich dials, is going to be more of a, like a sand texture for that as well. The overall dial layout as you can see, there's a lot going on to the construction. It's primarily a theme of circles throughout. So you can see that there are partially, uh, partially broken concentric circles moving in the actual sandwich perimeter all the way around. But then additionally, though, there are the concentric uh, dots in circles as well. So you have the circles and the dots, the circles and the patterning across the board. It's very circular overall, including the case itself. The dial is going to be predominantly printing as you move around. You have at the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock position, you have the name Gravathon as well as automatic over at the 3 o'clock. 
Additionally, you'll notice that you have the minute numerals on the interior ring, and then on the outer perimeter, you do have the hour numerals as well. Down at the six o'clock position, you can see that there is a date cutout. And of course, as you'd expect with this one, it is circular as well. That is not, as you can see, a color match date, though I don't believe it's a pure white. It looks to me to be more like a silver uh, white as well. So it does uh, add a little bit of a, of a different look to it than just a plain uh, white date wheel would. As far as the handset, I would describe this as being kind of like a, a pencil or a sword uh, handset, and it does have a Dauphine style crease down the middle, so it has a nice facet for that, which gives you a little more light play. As far as the texture, though, the texture uh, on both the hour and minute hand is going to be a blasted, so it matches with the case overall. It's kind of a satin finish there as well. The second hand is re really unique. So the overall theme for this watch is going to be the Constellation Argo. The second hand, though, uh, marries a little more with the idea of the sextant with uh, tracking for your constellations. So you can see with that, it has a red accent color, but most pr prominently, it has what I would call like a skeletonized double lollipop design. And what's really neat is out towards the tip, you can see that as it moves around the perimeter there, you can, uh, you can see the minute numerals underneath and actually through the second hand. So that's a nice touch and good attention to detail. Shifting over to the loom, the loom on this is really impressive pattern. Not only does it have loom on the hour and minute hand, it does not have any in the second hand, but you do actually have the sandwich dial cutouts have a loom applied as well. I will say it doesn't endure quite as well as I would like. However, do be aware, the, as you can see here, there's a coloration difference between the hands and the dial. However, on the production version, they're going to change. Right now, it has a mix of Swiss on the hands and Japanese uh, BGW9 Super Luminova on the dial. It's going to all be BGW9 Super Luminova Swiss uh, variant throughout for uniformity. And I'll pop up a picture of that as well so you can see what it will look like. All right, changing back to the case here, you can see the bezel on this is going to be a fixed bezel. It is going to be flush with the case itself. And then it does have a nice slope, so a chamfer cut going up to that to marry that between the case and the crystal. The case itself is going to be what I've described as kind of like a saucer cut uh, type uh, type design. You can see, especially from the front profile, it does have that like saucer undercut to it. So it's a little straighter, a little flatter than a saucer would typically be with its round bulges, but it's reminiscent of that uh, similar type of, uh, of design and feel to me. The finish on this is also going to be blasted. That's uniform throughout the entirety of this watch. So there is cohesiveness in that regard. I would say the case dis combines a mix of angular cuts throughout. Those are not any real sharp edges. Those uh, I think are broken well enough, but without taking away from the angular feel. But also, of course, as we've talked about, it does have that round theme going throughout everywhere. So it's a mix of round, but still with angular cuts throughout. On the crown side, you can see that it does not have any crown guards built into this. Speaking of the crown, this is a very small crown. It's only coming in at 4.4 millimeters. Accordingly, it is a little hard to grip a hold of, but being an automatic, you know, I haven't found that to be any problem. Additionally, it does have a milled groove right here, which makes it real easy to grip a hold of with your fingernails there to pop it out. So I haven't had any problems manipulating this. As you saw, it is a push-pull configuration, so not screw down uh, for this, which is consistent with the, the overall style. It does additionally have signing out here on the perimeter. As far as the case back, we already took a quick look at this. As you can see, it's an exhibition case back. It has what I would describe as kind of like a raised inlay uh, for that. So you can see it does pop off fairly significantly from the rest of the case back, and it is milled out, which gives this, again, more of that saucer, even on wrist kind of feel that we'll look at momentarily. The appearance to me, I think that this is held in with a press fit. I don't see any kind of keys or any kind of screws, so I would presume that this is a press fit configuration for that. Shifting over to the straps, the straps, as we mentioned, there's going to be available with this leather strap that we're looking at today, and there's also a bandolier option that will be available as well, or you can get both of them. This particular strap starts at 20 millimeters, and then down at the last hole does taper to 16 millimeters. On the back, as we already saw, it does have quick release spring, spring bars, and then on the buckle, it is nicely, subtly, and tastefully signed there, though it goes across with just the brand name. As far as the bandolier, we already saw some pictures of that. I do want to mention those will have color matched options for each of the cases. So whether you go with the gold, the, uh, the silver, or the gunmetal, you'll have the option to have the bandolier that matches that. All right, so now that we have a better feel for the watch itself, let's go ahead and look at some comparisons. First, I wanted to pull up. This is a Citizen 
And as you can see, just a fixed bezel configuration to give you an idea of sizing. With this one coming in at 42, this one's coming in at 40, this gives you an idea of the overall presence. As you can see, certainly a little more dial presence on this one by all means than uh, on the Citizen, though both have a good bit of presence. One we recently looked at, this is the Batavi Architect, and this one's a little bit deceiving. This came in, I believe, 38 millimeters technically, um, and then th 39, I believe, technically, and then 38 uh, once you figure it with the, uh, the cutback for the bezel. But you can see, though, I think these are fairly comparable as far as overall presence. Again, a little more dial presence on this one, but this with the case does flare out a little more. So that hopefully gives you a better idea of the sizing. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and wrap things up with my personal assessment of the positives, some critiques, whether it be for me or that I think others might have, but additionally then wrapping up with the summary. First, I think this has huge value. Overall, for $270 or $290, whether you go with a single option or with the strap and bracelet, I think you are getting a lot for your money. A Miyota movement, good specs overall, sapphire crystal on both the front and the rear, a unique design, a big application of, uh, of Superluminova, etc. I think you're getting a lot for your money. The theming, I think, you know, whether it appeals to you or not is one thing, but the theming, I think, is well done. Playing into the constellation angle, as well as the sextant feel, I think it was married well between these, and I think it is very clear in the design overall as far as what they were going for. Comfort is going to be great. This is, like I said, it's light on wrist. It sits very well, even on my 6.5-inch wrist. It has uh, plenty of room because you don't have any lug protrusion, so you're not worried about overhang. As we looked at in the unboxing, it does ride a little bit proud, off of the wrist, but I haven't found that to be an issue. It's just something to get used to. It does have a smart watch feel. The loom pattern, it's really cool. I'm hoping that on the production version, they do pump that up, particularly on the dial, as I mentioned. But that being said, I do like the pattern, and I think that's something that's fun and unique. It's different than the full loom variations that are out there now from many manufacturers, but it still does have a lot of loom applied. And then the design, just really bringing that together, I do think it's a very unique offering available. Again, as unique offering, it's not going to necessarily appeal to everybody, but I think it's well done. As far as the negatives, for my personal critiques, I would have preferred if this would had been a 40 millimeter case. So instead of the 42 millimeter, I think it would have fit a little better on my wrist. And I know from some early comments, others agree with me as well on that one, though I do suspect that there's going to be plenty who are glad to see that it's a 42 millimeter. So that's just going to be a preference based item. The dial, you know, th this is one where I do think it's well done. I do think legibility is still there. I think it works just fine. But I will say, I do suspect that there are going to be plenty of people who think that this is a little bit busy for their taste overall. So that's something to be aware of. You're going to know that from the pictures, whether that bothers you or not. Loom performance, we already, uh, we already talked about that. I would like to see that kicked up. That's really all I have for this. I mean, at the price point, you really can't complain too much for only uh, $300. And that kind of leaves us with where we're at at the end of the day. At under $300, I do think it's tough to go wrong with this one. I think your choice is really going to come down to whether or not you like the theming of this, whether or not you like the execution, or if you're just looking for something different in your collection. Otherwise, I don't think you can go wrong. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you did enjoy this, please do hit that like button. Additionally, if you haven't done so already, please do smash that subscribe button. Helps the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.